Right, we are going to start today uh, a U unit, which is unit 9, which is the option unit. And as part of this option unit, we are going to be using three pieces of coursework. Uh, so they are all about the nervous system and uh, the maintenance of a constant internal environment and reproduction. I'm going to start today by looking at uh, A and understanding this interrelationship between the nervous control of the cardiovascular system and the respiratory system. So basically that means we're looking at the control of the heart and uh, the heart rate and breathing. And we're going to look at this bit here today, so the nervous system organisation. All right, this is a uh, section A in a bit more detail. And what you can see is that there are quite a few things that we have already started to look at. So we've looked a little bit about blood vessels. Uh, we've looked a little bit about the alveoli uh, and their structures and tissues. Um, you can see the action potentials are in here. Uh, we talked about synapses. And what we're going to do today is go through these first two parts here. Okay, so we're going to look at the central and the peripheral nerve systems, and we're going to be looking at the role of the neuron and the glial cells. Right, so to start us off with, we'll look at what we did at GCSE. And that's the idea that the nervous system is divided into two parts, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is made up of the brain and the spinal cord, and sometimes people also include the brain stem. And then the peripheral nervous system is made up of those sensory and those motor neurons, which connect um, sensors and senses and uh, effectors and muscles to the central nervous system. Um, just a little word about this brain stem. The brain stem is a very ancient part of the brain. It's part here, and we find it in most different organisms. Now, we've seen this diagram at GCSE, and this is showing the central nervous system. So this is the spinal cord here. And then we've got the peripheral nervous system. So these are peripheral neurons. So this is a motor neuron going down to the effector and muscle. And then this one here is a sensory neuron. And so they would be part of the peripheral nervous system. Now, reflexes like this one here, which would be a knee jerk, involve muscles. And so this type of reflex is part of the nervous system, which is called the somatic nervous system. The somatic nervous system is one that involves muscles. And it's actually not the one we're interested in. Just going back to that brain, um, this is obviously uh, the brain stem here. And so this little part here, you'll see, is in lots of different organisms because it's actually present um, as a very sort of part of most brains. Okay, so the nervous system as we think of it is divided into the central nervous system, which is made up of the spinal cord, the brain stem, and the brain, and then the peripheral nervous system. And that peripheral nervous system is divided into two parts. And the somatic nervous system is the one that we would have looked at at GCSE. So that's where you get those sensory organs, like the eyes, you get the central nervous system, and then you get them joined to effectors, like the muscles. What we're more interested in in this unit is this bit here, which is the autonomic nervous system. And it's sometimes described as the automatic and it's the one that's going to control that heart rate and that breathing rate. Now, the autonomic nervous system is divided into two parts as well. We have the sympathetic nervous system and we have the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is often called the flight or fight uh, nervous system. 
while the parasympathetic tends to be present or acting when we are calming the body, when the body is more relaxed, when it's able to carry out more of its normal functions. Okay, so this is the video I want you to watch first of all, and then just the first half will be absolutely fine where it talks about the parts of the autonomic nervous system. When you finish that, please can you come back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so hopefully from that video you've got the idea of the sympathetic nervous system being involved in flight or fight. And from this little animation, hopefully you realize that that's what happens when you are surprised by something. Your heart beats faster, your eyes dilate, your breathing might, might get more rapid, um, the, uh, the um, tracheals, the tracheals, the bronchioles in your lungs are gonna get wider to allow more oxygen in. So your next task is to complete this table. Now you can use the information for the textbooks on page 341. And again, when you're finished, can you come back to the PowerPoint? Okay, so the sympathetic actions of the eyes is going to be to do things like make your eyes get wider. So the pupils of your eyes dilate. They're gonna stop the flow of saliva because eating isn't something that's important if you're trying to fight a tiger. They're going to make the bronchi wider, so dilating that bronchi, there's the tubes inside the lungs, and they're gonna make the heart rate increase. They're going to um, inhibit, so stop your stomach contracting, because again, digestion, food isn't important if you are going to have to get into a fight with a tiger. And the adrenal glands are going to produce uh, adrenaline, which is going to help that met process of making your heart beat faster. And then your intestines at the bottom, again, are going to stop moving that food around. And the parasympathetic um, system is going to do basically the opposite. Okay, to move on, there are two types of nerve cell that are making up your nervous system and they're called neurons and glial cells. Now there's a link for you to have a look at, please do that at the end of the presentation. Glial cells are cells that are supportive, so they might support structure, they might provide components, so parts to the neurons or they might get rid of dead neurons. Now, swan cells are a type of glial cell, and they're ones that we came across when we were looking at Unit 1 Biology. The swan cells are the ones that provide the neurons with a myelin sheath. So that's that fatty sheath that goes around the outside of the neuron. So in this diagram, we've got the neurons, which are this brownie colour. So this is a neuron here. And this is the nucleus of the neuron, that's that dark brown part. And then the blue part is the myelin sheath. And that's made up by these special cells called Schwann cells. And they kind of get wrapped around, like that, around the actual neuron, the long length of the neuron. So what I now want you to do, I want you to spend a bit of time making sure you've got a definition for each of these terms and you understand what those terms mean. I also want you to find a flow diagram to show the structure of the neural system. Don't use mine, you need to produce your own. I want you to reference this using the information on this slide. So this is how to reference a website. All right, I'll speak to you soon. Have a good day. Bye-bye.